CCP, that's the center that we are right now, uh, for having some computer power to do some investi investigations and some research and some mathematical work with it. Uh, we were knocking doors on other universities and it come to be kind of difficult to reach the, the people that really have the contact for the for the policy to let us get in easily to to make this work to happen. So we moved from WAP, NAM and several other places. Um, we we come to see that all of our researchers uh -huh. este, all, all our researchers uh, have the, their ties to Europe or US but not into Mexico uh, in Mexico the computer power is a little bit low so to reach it is kind of hard uh, we, we try to solve this uh, situation because we wanted uh, for our students and our visitors to have some, some of it uh, available and then we contact these guys. You, uh, of course you know who are they. they uh, and these guys led us to, to bring the chance to, to do this uh, laboratory that we call it Laboratory Regional de Computer Data Center at the University of Autonomy We We call it regional because uh, at some point the people from Central America didn't have the reach also and are, were asking to us to help us to, to get uh, some computer power from Mexico and some try to contact the, the, the research people that were in there. So we decided to call it regional and we don't put supercomputer that is uh, a word many use in Mexico to, to describe the use of these big computers uh, because there is a little difference between them. One means that you could build computers or servers perhaps to do the job and to look like a big one, or one that is a supercomputer that has a lot of processors together, a lot of memory together, a lot of storage together. So that's the main difference between supercomputing and high performance computing. And so we decided to, to, to take in this because you're going to see those in a nice one. Sharing what does is, uh, you know, like the fact. Uh, very mature uh, research, very advanced research on, on getting what elements compose the universe. So they could uh, reduce a lot of power, and they have PSD computers really running into the, big, the biggest data centers in the world working together. They are very famous because they have the biggest machine for humanity running into their, into their experiments. This is one of the control centers, I believe it's uh, for oh, go to the next one. Alice. Alice uh, had the chance to get uh, some computer design of detectors from uh, this side of America, particularly some people of Mexico, who contribute uh, to do some research to make those uh, things to work for them. They have this made for uh, experiment that of course you know about them, but it's very present the size of the experiment. This is an airport, it's a 24 kilometers wide, and uh, these are the tunnels. Of course, what they try to do is uh, okay in Spanish. Uh, this part is good in Spanish. Uh, yeah, this is esos pequeños átomos a través de esos túneles que por supuesto son supermagnetos que ayudan muchísimo al desarrollo de la investigación y la ciencia en todo el mundo ¿no? de esos magnetos por ejemplo que son 24 kilómetros con muy alta energía eh, van a encontrar ustedes desarrollos por ejemplo en los tomógrafos que les pueden ayudar en cosas médicas ¿no? el consumo de energía de estos supermagnetos también ayuda a una mejor eficiencia energética y desarrollo de materiales que son frontera para la sociedad y para la humanidad. Bueno, básicamente this is, this is the, the face of one of the detectors, this is the size of a human being, the, 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 the collision happens here and then the particles go all down. So, so all of this has a lot of lots of frontier technology. 
happening in there. And they really need computer power to, to see what happens there. Do you, you remember the first slide? But also, to do that research, they, they have been uh, crossing with a lot of uh, situations to solve. And one of them made the web, the protocol that the internet uh, uh, works is HTTP, one more there, because they need to collaborate. And three people, one at US and two people at CERN, developed that protocol. And without that protocol, what you understand by internet won't exist ever. So these people really doing their science into some, some situations help the society to get these things happen, uh, the internet to happen. But it's not just the internet. You have here about big data. Uh, <coughs> you have here about the grids. You, you have here about, uh, for example, the iPad, the, the touch of the iPad or, or your phones happen to be invented by research that has been done here. Um, that's the major case that I can tell you about physics. Physics and uh, research in physics, whatever it takes in all the fields, always come back and bring to the people that lives in the society cost a better living. Because doing that research, that frontier research, maybe in astrophysics now, uh, brings to the people really powerful solutions to advance. So I will keep going on. For example, the networks to share that research across, all across uh, uh, Europe and brings computing centers all around the globe to work together and do one research that is about, well, thousands of research, but one job that is into those fields. You can see America first. You can see that Europe is really proud, uh, China is now going advanced, and America has its own personal. But Central America with Africa are the less developed areas in science in the world. So what happens now is that Mexico and now has a really strong tie to do some uh, research with CERN and all, all, all of these habits. What also is doing, it's part of research in physics now with Hawk, uh, some detectors, with as particles, as the particles. And of course there are some partners in Central America. Why is this important to us? Because most of us come from these areas. Uh, who of you don't come from this area? Maybe five or so, yes, of course. When we are speaking about in computer power, so you can see this is a live view at the point that I was making this slide of what was going on with this research. And they were running 2004, uh, for it jobs at the time, and transferring data to 13.98 gigabits per second. That's a lot. When you download some job at your house, you will see the speed going at top at one megabyte. They are doing a lot, lot of time more. So they really develop, they really push, for example, the fiber optics to run that fast. And the light traveling into it, to don't split in the colors and then come back after some kilometers and do it again and do it again as fast as, as they can because physics has its frontiers, and they solve with technology those frontiers to make it run faster, carry more, and do solutions for it. So, of course, we as Nachi, when you read, who will be my model to follow, or who, who will help me to solve a situation that I have in a superpower, supercomputer power, uh, we look into the skies. And we wrote a letter because uh, some people was collaborating there, and then it comes to meet the friend of the friend and things like that. That Karen was the lucky one. Uh, found out that they, these guys were donating the computers that were not at the advanced as the frontier research to the more, uh, low development countries. 
And in that case, they never have uh, donated to America, nor Mexico or Central America. And at some point, this Mexican research and the IT guy from CERN and all the stars come alive. And that you know, donation become too far. So let's see what size the, the data centers has. This is Merlin. Uh, it's one of the biggest on the planet, but it doesn't compete on the list to the biggest computer because this is a correlation between uh, around 30 countries and this has a lot of locations, about five are about the size and you can see that one of these racks will be with 42 units and each unit will have one or two servers on it. And that's a lot of computing power, a lot of energy, a lot of cooling needed. Uh, this floor is like two meters high under it, <coughs> just to make the air flow under it. So this takes everything to the limit. And this is the biggest hard disk of the planet, of course, also. So these guys, you can see here, one of the low sides. Uh, you can see these computers here are for storage. And that, uh, the PISA just has how many countries do you think there are? 24 for each server. So it's uh, 3, 6, it's taking. We think for, I don't know, maybe 7 or 8 servers. And the AI has about 12 racks. <laughs> it's a lot of storage. And working together and precisely when they needed to put the dot line into it, will respond and get a copy of two of them or maybe four of them at the same time. This lot of research, a lot of power. These guys really know how to do it. So if you see those servers are the ones that they donate to us. This is one of the pallets that came into the technology. This is basically available for research here. We have to know how to compute on them. Of course, some people here have, uh, have a good knowledge on their fields of research, how to make this uh, service to, to, to make the science to happen. But, but of course, it needs a lot more team to work on it. Let's see here. For example, how many watts will your microwave uh, put from your electricity thing? Maybe 1,000 to 2,000. Well, one of these has 1,000 and a half, so this. 1,500 watts on it, but it has three, and there are several servers on it. So putting your computer is not that just slow in mind, because the cable is going to melt, your meter is going to spin out, and everything is going to happen very fast, very quickly, and you probably will damage it. So we have to do a lot of research, some certification on it, and you can see here the donation. The donating is around 200 servers in something that we call Blaze computers. These are from Dell. These are one of the top charging numbers uh, devices. We have storage. We have very uh, <coughs> some mixed servers that do calculus and split numbers on and over. Well, yes, of course, this was two containers of equipment coming with just equipment, no cables, nothing on it, apart from switches and racks. You can see the racks at the end. But then it were 12 tons. Come to here. 12 tons of equipment, just for your power. So in the charts for Latin America, as if we see the chart for 2014, we will be on the around the sixth position on Latin America. And believe me, that's a big mark. Uh, the chart for 2015 didn't came out. I don't know the reason we, we never pulled pull it out. It might be available now, but we believe we are around 10 or 12 position. So this computer power is here. It's just to make things to happen. And it becomes to be 364, not 84, sorry, there is a mistake. Uh, 316 uh, servers. 26 racks, uh, the chassis when you put it, and 24 switches uh, that we call in the management field of networking capacitors. 
query uh, and instant switches that don't do the, the switching of packets as you do at your phone. That takes the package from here, takes the package from there, and then it forwards. No. These switches are very special except for computing. The scientific computing, what does is as soon as the first click of energy, the first byte comes in, it will be sent forward to where it has to go. Imagine experiments happening in one of those detectors that really happen fast, has, uh, has the need to be forwarding the data as soon as it gets entered. It can store the data and then thinking in where it's going to send it. These switches has that capacity available. So of course they uh, help us with some assessment, but at the end we want to, to, to say that there are 1 terabytes of storage, but if each storage disk that you see there is 1 terabyte, the new technology can put 12 terabytes on it. So this number can grow 12 times that. And how we come to, to get this number? Because CERN asked us for an example of one experiment from the list of 30 experiments that we provide uh, about how many data will Mexico possibly or Central America need for a scientific power. And we take the hope data and we say, you look here, there is one terabyte each day that the antenna receives, so it will be around 300 terabytes each year. And they say, okay, so we, do, we will give you 900 terabytes of storage. Not takes disk, really fast disk. So, well, we have some storage for experiments available. And that it becomes to be 200, 2,900 uh, cores for calculus. And this doesn't have the graphic accelerators because each car of those can have even to 160, 200 uh, processors. These are real Xeon uh, 5,000 line, really powerful devices to make and keep making for 24 hours, seven days a week, the calculus that you need. And of course, we can put those cars in a future operator. So this is a little, uh, a little map, I can change it later on. But this is how the computer looks as sample. You will see those blades with taking computers in it, those 10 servers, and you will see the fast storage and long-term storage, that this has the biggest storage mode. And around them are 1,500 1, this there. And of course, the energy. The, le the less, less, less energy that we pull out of them, well, this is the range of energy that we need. Between 5,000 watts and 12,000 watts. That comes to be, in the least case, the minimum, minimum case, 80,000 watts. And believe me, you see this uh, utility power things on the poles, it's around 50 k's. We need 350 k's for make it run 24 hours a day. So it's about three blocks of normal energy. Uh, it's, it's, a, I, it's a really nice computer. So that's about black card. But what comes uh, when you bring a device, a computer, or an experiment just like, like what's happening in, in the morning, and there is no internet, not connection. You become to have a lot of storage there, but you cannot feel it because there is no cable, or the cable is so uh, unstable that you won't be able to connect to another experiment or bring the data to, to, to make the calculus. So this is a big issue for us. Let me put this on. Huh? Especially here in Chiapas, has been quite a journey with the internet thing going on. And believe me, now we are really nice from two years ago that MCPP and faculty started. We just have a link, a radio link to the city, and from that we have meet even two home or, or comparable to four homes. The internet for all these facilities, and it was really crazy to make something to grab it. Sorry about this because it's taking some time to load, but we'll make it. So, 
internet traffic to change members during equipment access, whatever. How the internet comes to work and what is the situation here in America. And this is a big issue that we have to take. So in the design of our lab, we are planning to put in place an EXP, that is an internet exchange point. That means that is the thing that makes the internet to work. The internet is a net of, of networks come together. And those points of join are the internet exchange points. So we are trying to put that in this physical location to make the networks that come to us work for us and share whatever we have here with all of them. Let's see why it's important and why it uh, makes the internet work. And for this, I will do some video that will be about two minutes. Okay, I will be at the end. I will make it long, or if not, I will have to manage. 